appear to be recording, so we shall begin. So what we're seeing here is the inside, uh, sorry, the outside yellow sphere is potential interaction radius. So what we're seeing is that these three fridge freezers, <laughs> I don't know why I chose the freezer, but whatever, have an interaction, an interactable component on them, which means that they can be interacted with by the player. And the outer radius, the sort of yellow sphere, is how far away the player can sort of uh, tell that something is interactable. So a lot of this is just essentially um, copied a little bit from Arc Raiders, which is a sort of new game I've been playing a little bit. And so what we're seeing here is that, like, as you get closer to the object, it's actually interactable. So the outer sphere is showing you things that potentially could be interactable if you get closer to them. And then the green sphere is things that you're, can, you can interact with. And then there's also a feature where you can essentially choose which thing to interact with because obviously in a in a sort of highly populated world with lots of objects to pick up and drop and that kind of thing what you don't want to have to do is is like sort of move necessarily towards them so what we do is we use the camera direction to choose which object to interact with now this one if you look at the sort of right hand one it's just outside of the radius but we can theoretically get all three inside the, the interaction radius. And commonly there's going to be, I, I think I've set a, a max limit of 10, but that's configurable, sort of objects that you could potentially interact with. So if I just sort of show you what the interaction looks like, essentially this is a, a particular sort of storage box and this allows you to drag items into the other sort of storage. Right now it's, uh, so the interaction key is the E key, and you can see that it's kind of doing the same thing for this one. So if I just drag some stuff into there, and then go back to the other one, open that one up. Obviously the timings are not, they're, they're configurable as well. Uh, so you can store things in, in different inventories, which is going to be a big part of like managing your resources and things like that. You can recycle and reconstruct and that kind of stuff. So I'm testing out a bunch of different sort of like parameters that I can use on these things. So for instance, this one's got like a five or six second interaction time. Uh, let's just drag some stuff over here you'll see that there's drop and recycle so you can drop items into the world and you can recycle them for the constituents sort of resources so each item in the game's got a bunch of resources associated with things like metal and, and that kind of thing and in this particular one I, I did an examine action which essentially does the same thing as the open action right now but eventually you know there'll be up there are a bunch of different types of predefined actions you need know, pick up drop that kind of thing and you, so you'll see that the, the sort of interactions still work um, you can split your stacks and move them around and that kind of thing uh, there is a right click menu on here but for some reason the sort of positioning on that is always a bit iffy so i'm gonna get rid of that because i've replaced it with these things and I'll obviously get nicer icons for this stuff as well. Um, so really, I think that this is a really nice feature in our creators. So I wanted to sort of implement the basics of it myself. And I, I like the idea of it. Obviously all of these sort of debug spheres and stuff will go. Um, it's just a, a checkbox on the objects on the interaction component so yeah slightly arc radius -y, but i think it's going to be useful for gameplay um i like the idea of having different types of interactions so things like you know 
an interaction that takes quite a long time for it, like shutting off a valve or something like that. The one thing that's not currently being done here is that it's not playing an animation on the character to sort of lock them into doing it. And ideally, when you're interacting, you want the character to be maybe in a particular position. So I'll implement that as well. Um, but yeah, it kind of works, right? I think it's a it's a nice gameplay feature. Oh, another thing is that there's a sort of maximum size that I want to set on these things as you sort of scroll out. Typically, your view is going to be much more closer to this. But I do want to like cap the maximum widget size for the, the user interface and that kind of thing. There's a, there's a whole bunch of things. Weirdly enough, when I was playing Arcradius to figure out a lot of the logic for this, it's really fiddly. So in Arcradius, if you go behind an object, you get a different sort of, like it, it doesn't allow you to interact with it, which is fair enough. It also makes it sort of slightly transparent so you know that you can't interact with it. So I might implement that as well. But it's just all, all of these little parts, you know, as you go behind something, it becomes unavailable. So the interactions have a sort of directionality or can have a directionality to them that I think is really useful. Uh, right now, I've got right mouse button bound to this sort of... Uh, physics manipulation thing but i'm gonna get rid of that i think i don't it just interferes too much with a lot of things um so i might have to come up with some kind of maybe you need to be in first person to do it or something just to make it a little bit more understandable but uh yeah that's for another day i think okay there you go